What's up, lovers of whiskey and watchers of YouTube? I'm the Malta Activist and welcome to yet another episode of How to Hide Your Alcoholism by Starting a YouTube Channel. In this episode, we review a whiskey which I really should have reviewed a long time ago, but you know, instead of being resourceful, I decided to be a lazy piece of shit. But hey, you know what they say, it's all well that ends well. That's right, I'm talking about the Lefroig Karchis 2023 that we have in our possession. Oh. All right, let's get this party started. Before I begin, a big fat thank you to my first time viewers. Thank you for clicking through onto that thumbnail. That means you like whiskey and you like everything about whiskey. I mean, you're here for a reason, aren't you? Well, if, if that's your jam, then this channel is the one for you. We have whiskey lists, whiskey reviews, whiskey rants, whiskey discussions, whiskey vlogs, and everything in between. So if the sight of a middle-aged man telling you everything you want to know about whiskey is your cup of tea, then hit that subscribe button. And to my returning viewers, thank you for keeping your standards so low. It's highly appreciated. And finally, last but not the least, my Patreon and YouTube member gang. You guys are awesome. It's because of you that this channel is still around. All right, let's get on with the review. Now, for those of you who have been following my exploits for the last few years, know that I take my um, yearly sabbatical to uh, the Isla Festival in Scotland. Uh, but this time around, we just couldn't go. The plan couldn't come through. Um, too much, too much, too much of life got in the way for us to take some time out and enjoy ourselves. So, yeah, uh, really regret not being able to do that. Hopefully, next year we'll get things back on track. But in the meantime, as is custom, we try and review as many of the face releases uh, that we can. And I think the one that is most sought after um, is the Lefroy Carriages. That's right. I don't know why I keep saying Carriages. <laughs> the Lefroy Karches. The Lefroy Karches. This is the 2023 Lefroy Karches. Um, this is. Uh, it's. It says White Port and Madeira. White Port and Madeira on this. Okay. So interesting. Very very interesting. Um, what do we know about this? Hmm. Okay. Let's start with the obvious. It's a single malt <laughs> from Lefroy. Yes. That's. that's Okay, fine, maybe that's stating too much of the obvious. Okay, so this is what happens every year. For those of you who don't know, every year, Lefroy, during the month of May, June, release um, uh, a festival bottle, uh, and they call it Karches. Uh, Karches in Gaelic stands for friendship, hence their uh, loyalty program, which is Friends of Lefroy, FOL. Where's my, where's my one square foot of Isla land? That's right. I own one square foot of Isla Land. This is my passport. That's right. I'm actually technically a lord, given the number of, given the number of plots that I have. I should be a lord. Lord Mort Activist. That's what you can call me from now on. Yes, the Lord Mort Activist. Um, anyway, I kid you. So yes, every year since 2008, which was the brainchild of then distillery manager, uh, Mr. John Campbell, um, every year for the festival, they, they would come up with a release and, uh, and call it Karchus. And they would have very different types of maturation. So for example, last year was called Warehouse One, which I think was just uh, a bourbon matured, which was kind of okay, fine. Uh, then I think the year before they had the triple wood car strength. So it was three woods. Uh, bourbon sherry and uh, I think quarter cask if I'm not I, I don't know uh, but served at cask strength then the year before that they had uh, they had red wine they had red wine casks and then they've also had Madeira casks they've had uh, Amontillado uh, I've got a list over there somewhere over there um, so yes yeah, so different maturations every year for the for the fish isle and this year, they've decided to come out with the White Port and Madeira maturation. Now, a little bit of confusion, uh, but before I begin, I have to say that this is new distillery manager, Barry McCaffrey's first um, real cartridge release. And uh, because the previous one was, of course, under the watchful eye of Mr. John Campbell. 
uh, this is Barry's first carcass, so I think there's a lot riding on it, uh, and I'm sure he must have tried to pull out something special. And by the end of this video, you'll see, I think he kind of succeeded, because um, I think this whiskey plays on Lefroy's strengths. Okay, so what do we know about this whiskey? It's a bit convoluted, I have to add. So there's, there's some stuff written on the label here, okay? There's some stuff written on the sleeve here, and they both say two different things. <laughs> yeah, let me explain. So, first of all, uh, this is bottled at 52.3% ABV, um, as you can see there, which is basically the, the last two digits are the year in which the festivals happen. So, two, three, four, the year 2023. A little, a little Easter egg, if you like, um, but everybody knows about it, so it's not a real big secret. So. Here's what I know, here's what I think I know about how this whiskey was matured. Okay, so it was matured, uh, it says white port in Madeira. And now if you, if you read uh, some of the literature on the side and somewhere else, it says three quarters of this whiskey has uh, uh, Madeira influence and uh, one qu a quarter of this whiskey uh, has been exposed to port, white port, majority white port maturation. Okay. On the sleeve, sorry, on the sleeve, it says, I'm gonna read this out really, really quick, um, just on the maturation. So it says three quarters of the whiskey is matured in second fill Madeira cask, second fill Madeira cask, releasing the smoky bloody bloody blah. The final quarter has been finished in first fill port casks, the majority of that being white port. That means, by that definition alone, that means there was some red port casks in there as well, okay? That's what the sleeve says. But the label on the bottle <laughs> now says three quarters of the liquid is finished in second fill Madeira casks uh, instead of matured in Madeira casks like on the sleeve. And, um, da, 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 da. and the final quarter coming from first fill port casks with their sweet woody notes. So here it says just port casks and it doesn't say finish. So, um, Lefroy being Lefroy just, <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is stupid, right? Fucking communicate it, right? You, we know what you're trying to say, just say it. Why does this have one piece of information? Why does this have another piece of information? Uh, for, you know, just, just to irritate nerds like me? That's, that pisses me off. So already I'm a little upset, but you know, that's just me being pedantic. So this is what I think it is. I think both are, um, both the liquid, so 75% of the liquid uh, is, has been finished in second fill Madeira casks and 25% of the liquid has been finished in port casks, a majority of those port casks being white port. Okay, so I think they start, both, both the spirits started off their journey in American Oak, I'm guess, whatever, maybe it could be first, second fill, I'm not 100% sure about that, but I think they started their journey in uh, American Oak, and then 75% of that saw uh, a second fill Madeira maturation, God knows for how long, I'm guessing like maybe six to nine months maybe, and the and 25% and of the spirit uh, was then finished off in port casks, a majority of which were white port, so I'm guessing there were some red port casks in there as well, and then, then that was blended together, bottled at 52.3% ABV, with a price tag of 90 pounds for suckers like me to buy because, ah, FOMO. You know what I mean? So there's nothing I can do about that. <sighs> so yes, so I'm I'm like about 99% sure this is how this whiskey is constructed. Um, if you have any other information, uh, please do let me know. But I think I think this is probably what it is. And you know what, Lafroy, fucking pull up your socks. Um, I know you guys do good, you, you make good whiskey and all that, and I'll give you that, and you know, I won't, but this, this kind of stuff, this is ridiculous, like, just be transparent, just tell us what you've done. We're not asking for, you know, the sun and the moon. You, you haven't even told us whether this is non-chill filtered, whether this is colored or not, and uh, I don't know, I'm going to have to guess. I'm going to have to guess whether it's non-chill filtered. I don't think so though. Um, and I'll have to guess whether it's colored or not. I also don't think it's colored. You'll see in a bit why. Um, but you know, I can't d uh, be, you know, be definite about it. So uh, let us know. If it's not, 
or you just, you know, you just leave your options open and you're like, we may or may not, who knows, no, no, no. Fucking commit, just commit. Just commit and tell us. Either commit and be like, you know what? We are gonna chill filter every single whiskey. We're gonna put color in fucking everything. And that's what it is. Take it or leave it. And you know what? I'll be fine with that. At least, at least I know where I stand. But with this, ah, I don't know what kind of mixed signals you're trying to send me. You know, it's really, really upsetting. Anyway. Uh, okay, so maybe that was a bit too melodramatic. It is 12 in the afternoon where I am right now. So, hmm, I could be a bit cranky. All right, okay, so um, the tasting. Let's, let's do the tasting. There you go, I am just showing you the color in case it's not colored. In case it's not colored. You know, just showing you just for that, in case it's not colored. But if you look at it, I mean, it'd be silly to make this any darker, right? You, uh, I mean, it's being matured in white port and Madeira, you know, the, the palest of the casks, if you ask me. Um, so it would be it would be really stupid for this to look look like um, look like Coca Cola if you know what I mean, right? So you know, and there's a bit of red port uh, cask maturation involved as well. So maybe is this is this is this actual real color, natural color? I don't know. I don't know. I just I wish they told us, but you know what? It's a nice color. It's, it's a good looking color. Even if they've colored it, it's a good looking color. Though I don't think they've colored it. I hope they haven't colored it. But who knows? Who knows? So there you have it. That's what it looks like. So here's here's my problem. My personal problem. Not this whiskey's problem. My personal problem. My personal problem is that I have so many lovely, awesome, gorgeous, beautiful memories associated with that beautiful island of Isla that I go every year with my friends and I have the best time ever. And, and, and just every time I put my nose in a smoky, peaty whiskey, it whisks me away to my, to my, to my, to my place of calm and love and serenity. Uh, whatever, whatever you want to call it, right? So every time I smell something that's a bit smoky, a bit peaty, and I, I you know, my heart kind of melts, and then, ah, uh, so, it's very hard for me to be objective. It's very hard for me to be objective when I start off like that. So I'm gonna do my best to be super objective, uh, because that first whiff, quintessentially Lefroig, quintessentially Isla, took me there, transported me, you know, free of cost, to, to my favorite place in the whole world. And um, so, yeah, uh, so I guess that's why it's put a smile on my face. So, uh, yes, that's why. So, all right, let's, uh, let's see what it smells like. Right off the bat, that beautiful smoke, that lovely, lovely smoke. I get a smoked bacon, uh, hints of ginger. There's a lot of honey and sweet lemon in this. There's green apples, there's some grapes also. There's some pears as well. It just, it noses beautifully, by the way. It, it's, it's got a wonderful nose. Feels very well rounded. Seems quite sweet, by the way. Quite sweet. Um, I believe last year's warehouse one, last year's car just wasn't as sweet. This one is fairly, fairly sweet. Yeah, right off the bat, on the nose, it's the sweet fruits and the lemons and the pears and the green apples and the grapes that, grapes that are coming through. And of course, and I think that's the majority of the Madeira uh, maturation peeking through this. <sighs> yeah, and the grape is a green grape and the, uh, the, the apple is also a green apple and it's slightly tart and I think maybe that's some of the port stuff is coming through there. So interesting. Um, uh, interesting nose profile. I really like it, but uh, what, what, what really stands out for me is that it is quintessentially Lefroy. It, it has its signature distillery profile, and then on top of that, it has the layers of nuance and complexity. So for me, right off the bat, great nose. Um, well done. I forget his name. Barry McCaffer. Ah, I'm such an idiot. 
I should have remembered that. Sorry, Barry. Um, well done, Barry. Good nose, Barry. Good job. Yes, I really like it. I do like it. Shall we? Shall we? I mean, it's, it is 12 in the afternoon, but hey, if I'm not gonna do it, who is? No one that I know. So there you go, there you go. Look at that beautiful malt activist glass. Yes, yes. Um, let's go. Right off the bat, quite ashy. There's sea salt, there's some type of nuts there. I'm gonna guess hazelnut. That sweet lemon is back. Now, a lot more vanilla here. Ooh, uh, mid palate, end palate. Um, that smoke comes charging through mm, that, that um, uh, underlying layer of iodine, which is the quintessential Lefroig flavor profile. And finally, this beautiful spicy oak right at the end. Mm. Is this a good Lefroy? Yes, this is a good Lefroy. Yes, yes, good. Me likey. Ha ha. Okay. Ooh, and that finish. Just no. Everywhere. You know what I mean? Just it's like a it's like a drum roll of smoke and peat and lemon and lime and citrus and in my mouth. Still, non-stop, still going. Whoa. I mean, or, or the fact that it's 12 in the afternoon and I took a big gulp of uh, Castrec whiskey and uh, you know, I'm now uh, in my downward spiral uh, of alcoholism. Who knows? Who knows? Yes, and we're back, and we're back with this uh, Kerch's, this Kerch's 2023, which I gotta tell you, I like. I've had better Kerch's, don't get me wrong, I've had better Kerch's, but this one also does really, really well, okay? And um, so let's give it a rating now, let's give it a rating. I am going to give this, uh, 7.5 B plus yeah not so uh, it's not I don't think it's good enough to be an a minus in my opinion but I think it's a very very solid respectable high B plus you know what I mean just very close to an a minus for a minus I want I probably would have wanted uh, slight a little more complexity but you know what I think this is this is a good offering this is a good spirit and I think you know uh, Barry's done a good job. But I think, I mean, for his first cartridge, I think Barry's done a fantastic job. So, a polite round of applause to the new distillery manager, Mr. Barry McCaffer, who has very, very, very large shoes to fill. And I think he's settling in quite nicely if this cartridge is a sign of things to come. So, I'm quite happy uh, that that's happening. I'm quite happy with this particular cartridge. Um, it drinks really, really well. Mm, I had uh, initially said I don't think it's chill filtered, but something suspect about that mouthfeel. Doesn't really take away from the flavor, I gotta be honest, but there's something slightly, slightly suspect about that mouthfeel where I think there's a, maybe just the tiniest bit of chill filtration going on. I don't know, I could be wrong, but for a whiskey that sweet, I would have expected a lot more viscosity and a, and a bigger, a bigger mouth feel, uh, you know, and a fuller body. But this one is more on the medium, medium-ish, medium-ish uh, body, which makes me suspect that, yeah, maybe a little bit of, you know, just a little bit of scooping away the fat has happened. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, but it is what it is. Um, but you know what? Maybe not. Maybe not. I mean, it is 52.3%. So why do you need to chill filter it, right? You really don't need to. So I don't think it's chill filter. Anyway, honestly, I don't know. I just wish, 
I just wish they'd tell us so we wouldn't be sitting around here, you know, um, debating whether or not it's true. Ah, okay, so there you go. So this is this is what I think. This is what I think. Well then, Barry, good job. Um, uh, I'm really, really liking this. I'm going to drink more of this as the day progresses. So stay tuned. Um, I like uh, I like what you've done here because I think this whiskey plays on uh, plays on your strength, um, Lefroig's strength, right? And I think this is the kind of maturation that really, really works well for a spirit like Lefroig's, right? Uh, especially the Madeira cask. Now, uh, don't get me wrong, I'm, I'm not, you know, advocating a total, complete uh, uh, Madeira cask maturation overhaul to everything, no. But I think this is the area, right? This is the area of maturation and experimentation that works really well for Lefroy. And I think that's a good thing. Um, as far as the whiteboard uh, maturation is concerned, uh, not really sure how much of it, how that is really, really coming through. Maybe because it's a bit grapey, could be that, I don't know. Um, and it's a mix of, you know, red and white port, like we said, majority white. They've been very, very careful about, you know, saying that over and over again. There's a majority white port, majority white port. Um, yeah, so look, I think, I think most carcasses are good. They do a, a, a really, really good job of producing that one whiskey a year that um, satisfies people's craving for um, for a carcass, I guess, like me. Um, I'm not so sure if it's worth the 90 pound price tag. It's a very, very expensive whiskey for a non h Satan whiskey, even though it comes out once a year and all of that jazz. Um, the But the thing is, you know, economics, right? I mean, the same number of people will buy this even if it's 70 pounds. So, you know, because if you're spending 70 pounds on a bottle, then I guess you might as well spend 90 pounds, right? I think. So if people are willing to pay that price, so then why shouldn't they charge, you know? So I think that's a bit of a moral dilemma, which I really can't comment on. It is what it is. That's the price of the carches. Um, I went and got it. I didn't complain. Uh, I mean, I was like, ah, oh, shit, seriously, 90 pounds? Fuck, you know? Uh, but yeah, fuck it, I'll get it, I guess, you know? Um, so I didn't buy it reluctantly. I think I bought it grudgingly. Um, uh, I think I would have been much happier if it was 70 pounds. You know, I would have been, I would have been like, hey, yeah, let's get, an, let's get another bottle. But now instead of buying like, you know, three bottles that I normally do, I bought two because whatever. Uh, so I guess maybe that's the trade off. I don't know. But uh, so, yes, yeah, so it's, it's 90 pounds. But you know what the good thing is, which I really appreciate. And and shout out to my uh, friend uh, Whiskey Lock, who's also reviewed this whiskey on his channel. I'm going to put a link down to his review so you can go have a look as well. Um, uh, shout out to him because uh, uh, one of the things he did mention was how easily available uh, this whiskey is, which is which is really, really good. You know, it's been. It's still available, you know? I, I think it came out roughly a month ago and it's still available. You can just go buy it directly from Lefroig and, and I think they produce enough quantities, um, which means, yeah, we can we can still get to taste this, you know? We don't have to go on auction sites and pay fucking, I don't know, um, uh, two kidneys and a lung just to buy a goddamn bottle of whiskey. Um, so it's, it's nice that they flooded the market. They're like, hey, if there's anyone who's gonna make money, it's us, you know? And I think that's a good strategy. So that's what they've done. Uh, so very easily available. I think um, I think it's a uh, it's a good whiskey. Uh, I, I think it's slightly overpriced at 90 pounds, uh, but that's just a personal opinion. Um, I like the fact that uh, Barry's played to Lefroy's strengths uh, with this type of maturation experiment, and I think the white port and Madeira really work well with the with the Lefroy distillate. And I think it's you know I think it's a match made in heaven, frankly, you know. Uh, so well done, Barry, uh, and uh, congratulations on um, 
I'm taking over from John and, and I hope you many, many years of uh, uh, prosperity and good work and, and much better carcasses uh, in the coming future. So that's my, uh, that's my shout out to Barry McCaffer. Uh, what else? Yeah, I think we're done. I think we're done. I think we're happy. Uh, we we oh, we chugged we chugged a cast at whiskey at noon. So I guess today is gonna be a good day. You know what I mean? I think today is gonna be a good day. So there you have it. There you have it. And like I always say, I don't think there's there's ever a, ever a right way to end a video. So um, there you have it. Uh, until next time, I'm the Malt Activist. Peace.